Hi, this is Karthik. Welcome you all for this session. In this session, I'm going to teach you an introduction to program structure and programming basics. Once again, I repeat the topic, introduction to programming structure and programming basics. Let's start with program. So what is a program? A program is a set of instructions to perform a specific task. Once again, what is a program? A program is a set of instructions to perform a specific task. So what is an instruction? It's a step-by-step -step process. So what is the actual work of computer? A computer converts data into information based on instructions. So what is an instruction? An instruction is a step-by-step -step process. A computer program is a collection of instructions that can be executed by a CPU to perform a required task. So what is a program? We want to tell CPU what we are in need of as instructions. Without instructions, computer will not work. It's a step-by-step -step process. Each step we want to define what we need, how we need. It's called as instruction or else a program can be a structured and organized instruction to complete a specific task. So this is all about a program. What is a program? It's a collection of instructions to perform a specific task, or it can be a multiple instructions executed by CPU to perform a required task, or else it may be a structured or organized instruction to complete a specific task or required task. Next, moving on to programming language. What is a language? Why we need programming language? Let me see what is language first. A language is used to communicate with each other. It's a tool or a powerful media for communication. So in order to communicate with computer, we want to use any one of the existing computer languages. So a programming language or used to communicate with computers Programming language consists of set of rules, syntax, and regulation semantics. A programming language is a formal computer language which consists of set of instructions, commands, and statements. So what is a programming language? A programming language consists of rules and regulations. Like any other language, for example, English, if you want to speak in English, you have to follow the rules and regulations in order to write or in order to speak. In the same way, if you want to express something in terms of computer language, it too has syntax and semantics. You want to write a program in order to follow the same. Next one is programming language. Again, it continues. A language that we use to write programs are called as high level languages. So we'll be using any language, let us say like English or Arabic, or Hindi. So we can use any language in order to give instruction or in order to write the program. So these languages are not understood by the computer. So computer translate the high level language into machine code called as low level language. Okay, so after the program has been written, the computer converts the high level language into low level language. Since computer will not understand high level language, it has to be converted into low level language. So low level language, computer will understand. For example, binary language and assembly language. These languages are low level languages, so easily understood by computers and cannot be understood by human beings. Next one is high level language. And high-level language is a programming language designed to simplify computer programming. We cannot express all our requirements, that is instructions, in terms of zeros and ones or low-level language. It's impossible. So we'll be using a simplified computer programming language. It uses English-like statements and symbols to create sequence of computer instructions. For example, we can use C++ or COBOL, Java, Photon, Pascal, or Perl, or Python in order to write the program using high-level languages like English. And 
Next, we can see the high level language hierarchy user where we'll be having the hardware. It's a base. If you want to control the hardware, we want to use the low level languages like machine language or assembly language. So, what is an assembly language or a machine language? So, machine language is a native language which consists of zeros and ones. Okay, so this language is very familiar to hardware, so we can be able to control the hardware easily by using machine language. So, assembly language consists of shorthand instructions. Okay, so and on top of it, we can see high level languages like C, Python, Java, Pascal. These are called as object oriented and visual languages. Okay, so once again, I will explain the hierarchy so we'll be having the hardware if you want to control the hardware we we are in need of machine language it's called as binary language which consists of zeros and ones and followed by assembly language we'll see what is meant by an assembly language instead of zeros and ones it will be having some commands and statements in order to execute so on top of it we can see the high level language consists of like C++, Python, Java, Pascal. These are called as object-oriented and visual languages. Next, next, followed by assembly language. An assembly language is a low-level programming language designed for a specific type of processors. Again, what is an assembly language? An assembly language is a low-level programming language designed for specific type of processes and assembly code can be converted into machine code using an assemblers so instead of zeros and ones we'll be using numbers symbols and abbreviate use and after writing the code we'll be using assembler to convert the low level to machine language assembly language uses numbers symbols and abbreviations instead of zeros and ones in case of machine language, we'll be using zeros and ones. It's called as binary language, but in terms of assembly language, we'll be using numbers, symbols, and abbreviations. Machine language is a language that has a binary form. It can be directly executed by a computer, while assembly language is a low-level programming language that requires a software called as an assembler to convert it into machine code. So, in case of machine code, it is a combination of zeros and ones where computer can execute it directly. But in terms of assembly language, it consists of numbers, symbols, and abbreviation. So, we have to convert this into zeros and ones. Who is going to do the task? Assembler. Assembler will convert numbers, symbols, and abbreviations into zeros and ones. So examples for assembly language, below are some example of instructions supported by ID6 processor, for example, move. It means that move data from one location to another, add, add two values, sub, subtract a value from another value. Push means push data onto a stack, pop data from a stack. So jump to another location, I need to interrupt a process. These are some examples for assembly language. Next, moving on to machine language. Yes, it's a computer native language which consists of zeros and ones. Machine language or machine code or binary language which consists of zeros and ones. It's used to directly control a computer's central processing unit. Since it's a computer native language, we need not to convert any of this. So central processing unit will directly execute the machine language. Computer programs are written in one or more programming languages like C++, Java, or Visual Basics. Once a program code is compiled, the program code is turned into machine language. So we can use any high-level languages or programming languages like Java, C++ or Visual Basic, .NET, J2E, anything. So once the program code has been completed, it is compiled and program 
code will turn into machine code. The machine language that is a binary form of text, for example, if you're writing all over word, so it will convert like this in a form of binary language. This hello world computer will not understand, but we will understand. But this binary code, computer will understand, but we will not understand. I think you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this video.